So Germany is a uh, very interesting place. The culture is very different from what we know here. Um, for example, um, here in America, we'll say, how you doing? Um, but most of the time, we don't really mean it. Like, we'll just walk by, hey, how you doing? And we'll just reply, good, how you doing? And, you know, it doesn't really mean anything to us. Well, in Germany, you ask, how you doing, um, to those uh, very close friends and family and relatives. But when you ask it, you are saying, how are you doing? And you better expect a response because Germans don't leave anything out. You ask how are you doing and things are going bad for them, they will tell you every detail because you only ask that of friends and family. And so they trust you enough to where they know that they can tell you anything. And so they will tell you everything. And sometimes it surprised us, you know, we would hear things that we didn't want to hear or very personal things that we didn't expect to hear. And so that's very different about the culture. Something very interesting about the German people is that they're very loyal. They're also very rough, but um, you get past that roughness of the German people. And if you get them to trust them and they become your friends, they are your friends for life. And that's something very special about Germans is how loyal they are. No matter what, they will stand by you. I mean, I know that we see that in movies and TV shows. You know, they say uh, friends till the end. Well, that's a reality in Germany. They will bend over backwards to help their friends. They will help you. They love soccer so much in Germany. And they would miss the kickoff of games to help us f find an address or something. And it's just very incredible how helpful the German people are. Like people drive cars, sure. Uh, the number one way of transport is public transportation. There are buses and trains and subways all over the place. And that's mainly how people get around. And what's actually really interesting about that is that the subway and the train companies go on strike a lot. There's a lot of problems with that. And we would have to find different ways to get around when uh, the train station would be on strike and such. Um, those were really interesting times. You know, I would make a joke sometimes about how um, Germany isn't a first world country, which obviously it is, um, but I would say that it wasn't because they don't really have air conditioning. Mainly it's just uh, using uh, fans in your apartment and also um, they would have things called Rolladen and it would be uh, a metal grate uh, that you would have on the outside of your windows and so you would just open and close them um, uh, at certain points of the day and it would keep your apartment cool. So the usual here in America is that it's a lot easier or somewhat easier to find automatic cars here in America and that's typically what's driven. You don't really l learn how to drive stick. I mean, stick is very popular, but automatic is just that much more popular. In Germany, it's the exact opposite by a long shot. It is so difficult to find um, an automatic car. Um, everyone is taught on stick shift and manual and um, like trying to rent an automatic is really expensive and there's a lot less options. And so stick shift is the chosen driving choice. The streets are very narrow in Germany. Um, for example, they don't really have shoulders um, like we have here in America. Um, and so they'll just have cars parked half on the sidewalk, half on the street. And you just got to connect. You just have to uh, finagle your way through the streets and through the traffic and find your way through. Um, freeways are also very different. You know, you hear someone say Autobahn and you think, oh, you can go as fast as you want. Well, in reality, there's only specific sections of the freeway where you can go as fast as you want. Now, um, here in America, we know a little bit about how the left lane is for the fast people. You know, the further over into the left you get, the faster you go. Um, but we don't really follow that rule. It's just kind of a, an unspoken rule. Well, in Germany, that is enforced. Um, you, it is illegal to pass on the right, and if someone's coming up behind you in the far left lane, you have to get over. Um, and you better because they're coming up behind you at 200, 250 kilometers an hour. You better move over because they're coming up behind you quick. And then you'll get to the end of the uh, limitless zone, then you'll have to slow down, and then everyone's moving at the same speed. 
Um, what's actually interesting is during the limitless zones, uh, the freeways will expand and you'll get another lane or maybe even two. And so you'll just vroom on by. And, um, it's really exhilarating to be on the Autobahn and be in those um, sections of the Autobahn where you can go as fast as you want. The German food, the German food is incredible. I was really worried because I didn't know what the German food would be like. Turns out it's a lot like what we have here. A lot of meat and potatoes. Um, they have something very interesting, it's called knudel. Um, and there's very many diff uh, different types of knudel. And so you can have just plain potatoes um, and it's just all mashed into a ball and it's really, really good. Ah, oh, knudel. Um, or you can have something called Zemmel Canuda wha, where they'll uh, take bread and dehydrate it into little balls and then you uh, boil it and then it fluffs up. So good. Ah. Um, something else that is very popular is Ramsosa. And so it's just a sauce, you know, put it over everything. Ah, so good. Uh, something Swiss that I had um, is called Raclette. Raclette is uh, essentially a little tiny stove furnace thing that um, you can put on your table, you plug it into the wall, and usually it'll have two different layers. And on the first layer you can cook your meat and uh, mushrooms, anything else you want to eat. And on the bottom it'll have these little tiny trays. And you'll put uh, any kind of cheese, there's a specific raclette cheese you can use, and you'll heat it up. Um, once you've got your meat or whatever you want to eat cooked up, you'll put it on your plate, then you pull off the little spatula and scrape off the cheese and put it on. Ah, oh, it's so good. I love it. Bratwurst are also very um, big there, you know, as you would imagine, you know, they're German and they're so good. Actually, when I came home, I was actually craving like one of those uh, like Costco hot dogs that you have at every party. You know, it was a little weird, but I'd had so many amazing bratwurst that I was just ready for um, a bad American hot dog, <laughs> as ironic as it is. Something else that is very uh, common and very popular is something called currywurst. And so essentially, you'll take bratwurst and you cut it up and you'll get a curry sauce and you'll pour it over and you can do different levels of spiciness. I had one that was like a million and a half on the Scoville scale, really good, really spicy. Um, and it'll usually come with a side of fries and then in Germany they'll have uh, mayonnaise as the side for the fries instead of like ketchup or fry sauce or anything. It's mayo, so good. Uh, something else that's really popular is something called a döner. And so these are actually technically Turkish, but you see them all over in Germany. And so Duna, if you've ever if you've ever had like a Greek gyro, you know they'll have the meat and the vegetables kind of rolled up like a tortilla. But a Duna is essentially that, but instead of rolling it up, they'll actually cut the pita bread and they'll stuff it like a sandwich and they'll have so many more vegetables inside them and it's super delicious. You can get them for like two and a half euro. So good. Sauerkraut is now one of my favorite things on the planet. Uh, same as red cabbage. Um, that's very good. German food is very, very good. I gained like 40 pounds, um, but the food is very good and very worth it.